I first met Dave when I bought some drum heads off him in September, while I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace. It just so happened that I needed new drum heads, and it was this serendipitous event that led me to hosting this interview. In this interview, we talked about Dave's early years in drumming, how he started at the age of two, and how he's been playing ever since. Dave also shares his advice for young drummers, and some of his anecdotes from his experiences working on many productions. It was great to talk to another drummer and find our shared experiences, and I hope you all enjoy listening to this as much as I enjoyed hosting it. Without further ado, here is a conversation we had. Uh, for anyone watching who doesn't know, this is Dave Adams, um, and he is the drummer for the West End's production of The Lion King. So yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was very you know interested to learn that actually you started drumming at the age of two. Is that correct? Oh, I thought how did you know that? I did a bit of research. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I just looked yeah, up but... your name and just thought I'd. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, because I don't do a lot of that. It's sort of social media stuff. Mm. It's weird. I mean, I'm amazed this is happening. But um, <laughs> now, yeah, my dad was a semi-professional drummer, so we always had. Um, a drum kit in a back bedroom somewhere and um, I wouldn't leave it alone apparently I'd crawl to it and stuff and then he started teaching me a few things and in the end he packed up and had his kit cut down made for me and I used to end up playing around the clubs when I was like four five and six and did some television stuff which you weren't allowed to do in those days because kids weren't allowed on television so it, it's quite amazing you know I did a thing called Blue Peter I don't know if that's still Oh, wow. Blue Peter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I met Petra, the original dog. Um, I, I even got a gold Blue Peter badge. Nice. I still got it somewhere. <laughs> so you drummed on television at, yeah. at, at a young age. Yeah, I was, on a, I was on a programme called the Cliff Mitchell Programme, Junior Showtime, Blue Peter. But it wasn't really... And they actually paid me. I think I got about £1.20 or something, you know. But um, yeah, that's how it all started. It was all my dad's fault. Mm. And I, he, uh, where I lived, where I was brought up is Bedford area, Bedfordshire. So Johnny Dankworth lived about, you know, in Wabenden, which is not far from where I was brought up. And he heard about me, ended up playing with his band a few times. I mean, probably a lot of people have never heard of Johnny Dankworth now. I don't know if it's that, but um, Cleo Lane. And he... He just forwarded me, you know, and started saying, you need to learn to read music. So then I started piano lessons when I was eight. And that, I've still played piano now. In fact, drumming and piano are very much equal in my life. In fact, I was just playing the piano then before this interview, you know, and that's why I nearly missed yeah. it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe you'll have to give us a little sample later, maybe. <laughs> I'm sat um, on the piano with it. You'd be quite sorry the dog's coming. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, so I was just wondering, actually, uh, so you're a multi-instrumentalist. So how, how do you think the... Um, would you say there's sort of a, a symbiosis between sort of the rhythmic elements of piano and drumming do you think there's some sort of link there oh, in the brain big time. they're so linked and learning the piano if you are just a drummer um is superb you know it, it makes you think differently when you're playing with a band i i'm i'm lucky in this fact that i've got a thing called perfect pitch so it's like when i learn music with bands i i i can make notes on drum charts which drives my depth mad but i'll put oh yeah c7 here and f7 they're going well that means nothing to us i said well you'll hear it they said no we won't <laughs> unless we have a piano sat there you know <laughs> yeah yeah so i said so you know it does help because you playing the piano and i'm a very rhythmic piano player you know i mean i get asked to do a lot of comping for people and stuff like that in, on recordings and because i am very rhythmic on i just love that and the two, you know, it's a percussion instrument, the piano. So, you know, it's, they help each other big time. And I, I would tell any up and coming drummer, learn piano or any tuned instrument, you know, vibes, you know, it goes with a percussion or something, something. So you learn all the harmony and you're, it gets your ears going. The sooner you do it, you know, you, you will become attuned to what, instead of just playing along, yeah. you listen differently. You completely opens up your ears. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's interesting you say that because I was speaking to someone uh, recently who started playing. They didn't play a drum kit, but they would 
sort of drum on pillows and then they started learning guitar and they said it actually influenced the way they played guitar because they played more oh. rhythmically you know instead yeah. of you know instead of maybe lead like kind of parts they play more sort of rhythm based yeah. um, and that sort yeah. of influenced their playing well you you end up feeling the spaces more you know and it's so important you know it's like it's not that I say when I'm playing, I'm going one e and a two e and a three, but you you feel it. You're you're aware of waiting for that one. You know, yeah. I hear there's a lot of piano players. I know why I get called in. I mean, they are professional piano players, but I get called in because people know that the one's pretty gonna land where it should be. You know, <laughs> so it, it's great, and I love playing piano like that. You know, I'm I'm not uber technical or anything like that, mm. but I'm very much rhythmic orientated i love it you know and the same i play guitar as well and it's i'm the same with that you know it's like i don't want to do all the flashy solos i'm just quite happy chunking along in the background you know that 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 is heaven for me i can sit there for hours and just like i've got a roland kit set up here and i will sit for hours with a metronome on playing the same groove you know yeah. no fills just like it's the hardest thing to do, yes, and it's it focuses you, you know, and yeah, the same on the piano, you know. Definitely. It's, I mean, I once heard of um, uh, a drum teacher making his student play just a, a simple four-four beat, you know, just a one, two, three, you know, yeah, for a whole song, and and basically every time that they tried to do anything different, tried to do a fill or tried to add anything, they were like, no, stop, start again from the beginning. You and they were slapping. yeah trying to <laughs> trying to teach them how to do just groove just yeah. groove through this entire thing with feel and I it's, mean, a, it's so important you know i mean because you hear you can get five drummers say for example to play just crotchets one and three on the bass drum hi-hat say four crotchets and the two and four on the snare drum and it will it will sound different with all of them even if they're all playing the same kit you know it's like it's amazing it's and then if you really slow it down and analyze it, you can see where the differences are because where they're ahead of it or behind it or some, you know, like when I do a jazz thing, which I used to do a lot of jazz years ago, you know, but you play right on it. You know, you're, you're top of the beat. Rock, you're right behind him. I talk to people about this and they look like I'm from another planet. You know, it's like, and then on these, funny enough, on this Roland drum machine, you've got a thing called the drum coach. I don't know, you probably all know of this, you know, you, you're so technique technically you know i don't i'm i'm all right i get by with it and stuff like that but they've got a drum coach on it. i didn't know they had this and i pressed it one day and when you play snare drum back well what play what i was just talking about then and it has these arrows that shift and tell you where your bass drum placement is and it's terrifying <laughs> that's really cool i didn't know i didn't know that there was that function i didn't know they could do that that's well crazy. this is the TD17 KVX module and it's got a thing called coach on it and I thought oh what's this all about and it, it was mm. it was quite frightening because when you think you're really on it <laughs> so you can you go in score <laughs> yeah I mean you could essentially train yourself to play like Ringo you know and yeah be looking at the Absolutely. coach yeah yeah That's it's crazy, crazy. It, I didn't know that because you know I'm going to start teaching here and I did when I saw that I thought brilliant you know mm. that's an eye opener for everyone yeah know? yeah it's crazy what so. we can do with technology nowadays isn't it oh totally so, yeah it's mad um and what i've got it set up now nicely in my room upstairs is i've got the kit there and i've got a piano here so if there's a student playing there i can play along with them on the piano to see where they're at you know sure I'll, I'll, it's great for that because i can say all right that sounds brilliant but let's just try a group you know, I'll play some. Oh, that's not that's not happening. I, you probably can't hear that. I heard I heard something. You know. And they can play along with that. And if they're playing with a live musician rather than some and it enhances a lesson, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Because they got me. I know I sometimes might get me bass player made around, you know, and it, it, it they're in the, and the lesson flies, you know, they, they think that's it, your hour's done. And they think, wow, really? You know, I said, yeah, because you've been playing in a real environment rather than me going, do this, do that, you know, it makes it more interesting. Because I was taught, I didn't really, I, ne I never had drum lessons ever. 
apart from my dad saying, oh, you do this. And then he just let me loose and played loads of music to me. You know, that's, I, that's all I remember when I was a kid. I had reel-to-reel tapes. I don't know if people have heard of those. I had everything on those things. I used to just listen from the age of four. Everything. I loved it. And it was all going in, you know, and it was like, can't do enough listening. Oh, I'm a big believer, definitely, in, in, in listening to music to learn. Oh. So I think playing by ear and, and, and playing with other musicians is, is fantastic. I mean, especially oh. at that age, that is incredible, you know, to get well, that opportunity. I've always said, you know, the people have always asked me, you know, oh, you were playing, like the cast might say, oh, you played something different today. And I'll say, did I, you know, and then I think I weighed it all up is because we have depth bass players, depth keyboard, but because the bass player is playing something different, it influences what I, but I was totally unaware I was doing it, you know. He'll just play something a bit different than our normal bass player. And it's going in and I'm programming that and it's coming out as differently, not drastically, but you know, it, it, that's how you've got to be. I think musically, you know, you've got to assimilate what's going on around you rather than sticking to what you play all the time. I mean, sometimes you do have to do that, you know, but if you're doing eight shows a week, trust me. <laughs> you have to be dynamic, I guess. You have to kind of go with the music and, and be very... I always say to myself, be, yeah, before every show, I say to myself, right, here we go. This is the sixth show of the week. Oh, God, you know, but there are people out there who have never heard this show before, you know. This is their first time. Come on, get your act together. You know, you're getting paid a lot of money, so it's not hard. It's only two hours, you know. Seems it's ideal. Hard graph. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the yeah. Phys- physically, is it is it a tough is it a tough gig? Do you find do you find it's like quite an exerting sort of gig? That's why I never you I mean I used to practice years ago, but when I because I'm 62 now and it's like when I got to about 40, I was pl- no. 40 yeah I'm right well 22 25 I was working so much that you were playing all the time you know but now as I get out off I'll, that's why I've got this set up all right it's not an acoustic kit but I've got it tuned those mesh heads pretty much how I have my kit and it I, it's great you know it keeps me there because I thought with this lockdown especially you know I thought I've got to play I'm playing every other instrument in the house but the one I earn money on <laughs> You know, or my main job. So I thought, I've got to get my rolling down, you know, and I, mm. thank God I did. It's great, you know, although it's not an acoustic kit, but it's still, it's, it's still keeping these muscles. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's another topic I'm quite interested in, um, to learn your opinion on is, um, I guess, exercises for warming up before you play, sort of how to be as ergonomical as possible when you sort of yeah. play. I th- I do it every, for every show. I'll be in there 15 to 20 minutes before everyone else on a pad. And I'll just set the metronome at various tempos, you know, like, and just, I had this thing that I got into just before we locked down. Well, I was finding it really nice. It was triplet based. And it was like, um, how did it go? <laughs> I've got to remember it now. Oh, yeah, you're doing single strokes, double strokes, paradiddle, double paradiddle, but all in triplets. So if you say you've got that, that um da, 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 singles and then the same thing but doubles da, da, you know yeah 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 and then paradiddles da, 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 and then double para triple paradiddles so you you're going across the beat as well but it and just not doing it really start slow you know especially i have to otherwise i hurt myself in the show sometimes you know because i'm very emotional when i'm playing the drums people just laugh at me because they said you're growling again, because I growl when I play, and I'm not aware of this. I was always aware that I had a sore throat at the end of most shows, or a dry throat, and they said, we can hear you in your overheads. I said, what, hear me? They said, you're going, Aah. and it's just the emotion of it all, you know, it's like, because it is a physical show. I mean, we. the great thing about Lion King is we start off with Circle of Life, and it's a great opener to the show. It's so brilliant, you know, it's it's quite heavy, but it's funky. It's fun to play, but it's not too much, you know. But it's great to get your pulse where you think it should be, where your meter should be, should I say. It's it's an iron. Because sometimes you can get on the show, and Circle of Life is clicked. And I don't know, you probably, you guys find it. If you can put the click on sometimes, you think, God, that's fast. 
and you keep checking it to make sure it's all right. Or sometimes it's just, God, that's really slow, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all to do with your biorhythms, yeah. So, so it's a great leveler for the beginning of the show. It sort of, it locks you in, you know, and gets your meter where it should be. It prepares you for the rest of the set, I guess, if you're I'm, kind of locked uh, in. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fantastic. Really? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Do you so so um so you do your your warm ups, you do power needles and stuff. Um, is there any stretches and stuff you'd recommend for you know arms, legs, that sort of thing? No. I'm sure there are. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm actually quite. I cycle a lot, and I do stretches after a cycle ride. So I mean, mm. I no, I've never. I've just been very gentle with you know, with the pad. You know, like I just get a pad. Because I guess that, that's the same motion that you're going to be doing sort of yeah, later on. Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, you look really relaxed. And I am. Relaxation for me is so important when you're playing the drums. You know, and a lot of people have said to me, you get quite a lot of volume out of the drums, but you don't look like you're pushing it. I said, well, it's volume doesn't come from like hitting it. It, it. Distance, you know, and I've often said, I said, hold your hand up there and drop it onto the, from that distance. And it will go... I said, drop it from a smaller distance. It's quieter. You know, it's it's not rocket science. You know? no, no. <laughs> but you don't have to hurt yourself. You know, you see some of these rock drummers and they're, the distance they're traveling, you think, yeah, that in itself is creating. You know, I used to have a debt and I had to have a word with him because at the end of every show, I'd come in the next day and all my drums had big dents in them. I said, what are you doing? You know, it's... <laughs> I actually called him in and I watched him playing. I went, you're going to end up in bad condition in like years to come. You know, you're, you don't realise you're hurting yourself. I said, you don't have to force it. That and I'm sure, you know, you get nervous as well. You know, your first show on Lion King, it, you're, you're the centre of everything, you know, and it is a big responsibility. Mm. Even so that with some of my depths, they've, um, they insisted that I sit with them through the first show, which was a bit embarrassing. You know, it's like, you feel like you're babysitting, you know. But it has helped sometimes, you know, when I've seen them flick over the music and they've jumped two charts. And I've just gradually said, yeah, you might want this one before that one. <laughs> so that's, it is good like that, you know. Yeah, that's, that's interesting though. Um, what, what, sort of, um, what sort of advice would you give when it comes to playing a, a stage so compared to say like a, a regular gig you know like a yeah the only the only way you can get prepared for show work is you've got to play as many styles as you can leading up to it you've got to be you've got to be at a bluffy way through a lot of you know i don't mean playing you know like new orleans authentically but you've got to be able to give it that vibe you've got to get the vibe right you know that's the thing the feel it's coming from you you know and the big thing I do as well, because I'm in my own booth in Lion King, I was I I don't have a lot of the band up. I have bass and drums. I can sort of hear the rest of the band, but I have the vocals on stage as well. Because if it's all going tits up and they're struggling, you know, if you're locked in with them, they're the ones who are on stage being looked at. And if you're like being dogmatic saying no you're rushing no you're rushing they're gonna what they're the ones that are gonna look like an idiot <laughs> so you have to almost to, you know yeah. uh, help them make it easy for them yeah, yeah you know they're the ones rushing around leaping around singing you know you're just sat in your booth you know playing you know so, so i always try you know i just i did a tour about two years ago with someone and we're at the royal albert hall i'm not dropping that in but it was a big place and the monitoring was shit so i thought i'm going to play with cans on because i couldn't really hear everything was so distant you know it was like i thought this is not happening and i said turn the main guy up i won't mention his name and give me a bass and drums and that's all i want you know that'll do me i know the chart but i've got to lock in with those three elements it's my job and everyone else is gonna to have to follow you know but as long as i'm with the singer and the bass and the guitar, I can hear them. We're together. Happy days. Yeah, yeah. I've heard I've heard lots of things about the Royal Albert Hall about um, acoustically as well. It's not the best sort of building. Mm. You get in there. I remember because the kit was set up, and I turned up, and I remember sitting there, and I thought, I know what's going to happen here. And I hit the snare drum, and it went everywhere. It was like, <laughs> oh my god, it's rebounding so everywhere. Perfect. 
Yeah. Well, they put perspex around me as well, which helped a bit, you know, for spillage and all that. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you meet another place is um, Newcastle Town Hall or that place in Leicester. There's a hall there. I can't remember what it's called now. It's part of the Leicester University. We used to play there all the time. Nightmare. It's like playing in the swimming pool. You know, it's as soon as you hit your drum jar, it sinks. But you think, right, hang on. Got to cope with this. And also, when you get in a venue like that, that's so you've got to cut down what you play. You know, forget about all your flashy rolls or anything like that. You've got to really rein it in because mm. what they're hearing out there, they won't hear all the little notes. You know, yeah, it's like, the, the nuance is lost a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it can go. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's nice for you and everything, but what they're hearing out there. So, oh, yeah. What's your, what would you say is your favorite venue then that you've ever played in, in terms of just everything? You know, funnily enough, talking about is um, um, what's it, Symphony Hall in Birmingham. Another, again, that's big, but it's contained. It's mm. really nice. And also, the wonderful thing about that place, you can drive your car up to behind the stage. Oh, nice. Fantastic. That's <laughs> great. Great for unloading and stuff, I guess. Yeah, I was doing mm. this Pops concert, this uh, some with this orchestra and I remember looking around behind my drum kit and there was my car <laughs> it was like my getaway is going to be so fast because I thought they'll put the kit away I jumped in my car leg it and that was in Birmingham I remember being home in about under two hours it was wow that's, yeah. that's happy days but the, but the acoustic there was gorgeous mm -hmm. I you know that there's so many places I've played I can't really think offhand where I really loved, you know, but they all have their challenges mm -hmm. and you have to be adaptable. Yeah. So I guess you started probably in in clubs and, and pubs. Is that, is that right? That's all kind of working your way up. All the, yeah. Around Bedfordshire, all the clubs and pubs and well, not pubs so much. It was it was clubs. They had a lot of clubs in those days, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not like today's clubs, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Light. Yeah. <laughs> Like a like town town clubs and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. working men's clubs. And yeah, like social clubs. You know, they were lovely actually. And my dad was a singer as well, so I'd be in the band, and my uncle played the piano. It was a real family affair. And, you know, they were good. You know, I, I learned a lot, especially when the dancers get up. You had to learn how to play foxtrot, quick step, waltz, twist, all of that stuff, samba, the, but. You had to keep it in time, otherwise the looks you got from the dancers, you know. And yes. summer seasons, I did a lot of summer seasons when I was young. I used to, I went to a school called Cheetham School of Music in Manchester, but every summer I'd go off and do a summer season from the age of 14, you know. It was like, oh. I would, so I'd be working through the summer holidays, then I'd come back and back to school and off you go again, you know. So it was, it was great, you know. I didn't really, at the time, it was. And at that age, it's not hard work. You're just, you're reveling in it, you know, and learning, you know, because on the summer seasons, you'd have different acts coming in every night. So it's a sight reading thing as well, you know, it's like, and some of the parts, this is another thing I should get to people. That, I mean, if you do read music, sometimes when chart, the charts, you fine. What are we, what were we just talking about just then before? You know, I forget. Uh, what was it? Um, so we were talking about how you started in clubs learning lots of dance dance oh music. yeah 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 because yeah. yeah, I, I i mean oh summer seasons wasn't it yeah, yeah as well yeah. that was important for my reading but the thing is reading's never been a problem for me because i started piano at an early age so i was always reading and reading's fine but I used to play with a lot of classical musicians. I remember going to um, a concert once. Uh, I was just going on because my brother was in it and it was a school concert somewhere. And I remember the music teacher running down to me before the start of the concert and saying, are you Rick's brother, who's my brother? Uh, I said, yeah. They, they said, could you play the national anthem? And I thought it was a question. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> she went, no, could you go and do it now? This is the music teacher. She said, because we don't have the music. I mean, uh, it's like your own national anthem, music teacher, you, you don't know it because you haven't got the music. And there's a lot of that exists, you know, where people, if they haven't got the music, mm. forget it. They're, it's like switching them off. There's a lot to be said for sort of improvisation there then, isn't there? Kind of yeah. you know, learning how to ad-lib on the spot. 
Yeah. And yeah. I sort of said, well, you know, yeah, I'll play the national. So I had to go up, play the national anthem, and then come back to my seat and watch the concert. And it, I thought, that's not right. You know, <laughs> so a music teacher in a school not knowing mm. her own national anthem, you're, uh, she probably couldn't play Happy Birthday. You know, I mean, sounds stupid. So, I mean, reading is important if you're having to go and do gigs on the fly and just turn up and here's the dots, off we go as best we can. But developing them as i was saying earlier on you yeah. know is so important a lot more important Definitely. otherwise you're just a machine aren't you you know it's like you're feeding stuff into a computer to turn out yeah it's not it's not, not as organic is it and you've got to develop your own style as well you know really i mean just doing lion king the the guys in the band say it's really interesting how you've got I've got about eight depths and they said you all play it differently they all play it differently to you you know there's something you can't put your finger on it well they can I we, we probably would if being drummers you know you think oh yeah I can tell what's going on there you know yeah yeah little nuances you know but as uh, long as it grooves that's all that matters you know absolutely yeah so I mean what so you were so you were 14 you were doing summer shows um <laughs> summer season what what was then the next step sort of in the in the journey how did you then sort of progress I used, there? I, well i my, my <laughs> i forgot about this but my main into my principal instrument college i went to the i went to Cheetham school of music then i went on to the royal northern college of music i mean i got into the london colleges but they wouldn't let me have a joint first study and i i was joint first study trombone and piano funnily enough percussion was my second study and drums and oh. Although I think it's because I felt so at home with them. I thought they'll get that look after itself, but I'm developing these other things. So I used to play a lot in orchestras on trombone and um, that led to, in the orchestras in those days, we used to do these things called Ron Goodwin. This is up North. I'm talking Northern Symphonia, you know, the BBC, the Liverpool Phil and all that, Halley. And um, they used to do these Ron Goodwin concerts. And uh, I, I just did a couple of them on drums and I had bands going at college on drums and word cottoned on that, you know, oh, there's this guy, you know, who he'll play any he can read. His ears are good. Hopefully plays in time. And it just it's word of mouth. It's I never had any game plan at all. I just played as much as I could. You know, I even used to play congas in a salsa band called the Beatles in Manchester with a, led by my mate Dave Hassel and I used to it, I did everything I could you know there was that I was like a big sponge I couldn't I'm everything I just wanted to do it all I was mm. not like a musical snob in any way you could and now so you could put me anywhere now you know I'm, I'm ready for it you know because you've done so many different styles and so many different kind of types of gear oh, that it prepares yeah. you so much that's amazing exactly. yeah no, I'm a and big believer same, in uh, taking every opportunity. I think that's I think that's the best way forward. Yeah, and people get to know your name. You know, hopefully you do well. <laughs> but you know, even if you don't, you know that that's probably the wrong thing to say. Even if you screw up in any way, you've learned something from that. A lot of people go, oh God, no, and they get a thing about that style or whatever. I remember one of the first big bang gigs I did. And they didn't have any music as a count. But I did a tribute to Buddy Rich. To, and that was brilliant because I knew that stuff, you know. But this was, um, a tr it was the same thing a month later, tribute to Count Basie. And they didn't have any drum charts. I mean, I knew some of the Count Basie stuff. But, you know, you, you, you have to know that stuff inside out. It's so intricate. And I remember coming off that stage thinking, I went to the band leader and said, don't ever do that again. He said, well, it wasn't that bad. I said, I didn't know where I was after time. I've never mm. played these tunes, you know. Mm. And there's all the hits and the phrasing, you know. I'm just, so I just ended up being the time machine, you know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, know what I, mean. I didn't know any of the hits that would come because I didn't know the tunes. Mm. You know, I thought I turned up on the gig. If he'd have told me there's going to be no music, I'd have got all the records out, trust me, and I'd have been woodshedding that stuff. You know, I'd have just been listening to it, internalise it. I thought it was going to be dots. Mm. Sorry, there's no dots for the drums because you're just the drummer. You know, it's like... Sounds like there wasn't much sort of respect for the, for the, no. for the role of the drummer back then. It seems so. I just think... I think, they, I think they thought I was going to know everything, you know. Perhaps I should have. 
you know, at the time, perhaps I should have done a bit more Count, Count Basie listening, but, you know, there you go. You live and learn. But I never let it bother me, you know. It's like, wow, it wasn't so much my cock up, you know. But you do feel a bit sort of... <laughs> you a spare part, you know, and you don't know what's going on, you know. But there you go. But, you know, yeah, I would tell anyone, play as many styles as, you know, even if it's country music. I mean, some of those country musicians are killing. Oh, yeah. You know, they're ridiculous, you know. And, you know, learn as many instruments. I mean, you know, not but learn as much about other instruments as you can because it really enhances your playing. You know, if you know what a guitarist is having to go through or a, a brass player, see, now playing trombone, I'm aware they're breathing. You know, it's like, bang, you know, it's like some people just bang, you know, you're not giving them a chance. You've got to set them up right, you know, and I, I, it's, it, yeah, it's, I've got a few depths on my show that I sat next to one of them and I swear to God, he wasn't breathing. When he played, he was holding his breath. Wow. That's so crazy. Slapping him on the back. Breathe. <laughs> you've, you've got to pass to out. <laughs> yeah, you're going blue, man. You've got <laughs> You've got to breathe, you know. Yeah, he used to help hold his breath. And he said to me years later, he said, thanks for that. He said, you never taught me anything about the drums, but <laughs> you, you told me to breathe. And he realised he was at the end of a show, you know, or, or a gig, he was knackered because he wasn't breathing. You know? mm. so he literally was holding his yeah. breath. Yeah. Was, I mean, you mentioned like earlier about the, the, the growling thing. I think that's, a, yeah. that's quite a common thing of drummers because, I mean, I find myself doing it all the time if I'm just playing and I just oh, zone good. out and I start to to, to moan just like tunelessly yeah. with no sort of, it's not rhythmic right. at all. But it's, it seems perfect. like a, a drummer, you know, um, phenomenon, you know, that we just do that. I think, I think it's part of the emotion of it all, you know, because what we're doing is very tribal, isn't it? You know, it's like, it goes back to the beginning, you know, yeah. playing rhythms. Hang on, what's that? Get off. It's totally instinctual, thought. isn't it? It's like what's that? It's totally instinctual. You know, it's it's kind of it's very yeah, it feels natural. Yeah. Well, for some people, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people, you know, that, that it doesn't, you know, but mm. I wasn't aware that I was doing it. It yeah, it really and the more intense it gets, the worse it gets with me. Because I used, always used to wonder why I came off stage or out of a show, or mainly when I was playing live, you know, before the show. I had a dry throat, and it was yeah. like, I need a drink, you know. Basically, I've been singing all night. <laughs> I remember a, um, the, the drummer for Status Quo came to our school um, and did, like, a, a, a workshop where he played the kit and stuff. And he, I remember him saying, I'm going to switch off my uh, little mic thing because i don't want you guys to hear me moaning and growling and you know what as i play and it's it's totally a thing but it seems like so many drums do it we just oh. produce sound well that's good then because i mm. i thought i was some sort of freak the way they were talking no, i mean i'm <laughs> talking like 40 years ago you know <laughs> yeah no a lot, a lot of people do it and doing the recording i had to turn my overheads off because i couldn't stop myself doing it and they said, well, can you stop? I said, well, the only way that will stop is if you stop playing. I said, it's you guys that are making me do it. <laughs> That's a good thing at the end well. of the day. I guess because <laughs> you're, you're, so, you're enjoying it and you're, you're in emotionally involved with the piece. And that's a good thing. So, yeah. yeah. 